What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and today I'm going to break down my rank 1 Horde Worldwide parse on Kel'Thuzad. Now this parse is the number 3, the number 4 in the entire world. There are some alliance guilds that have done better so far on Kel'Thuzad, but today I'm going to break down what I did on this fight and how you can do basically as much DPS. Also, I'm going to go through the reasonings why, both for two things why some guilds are going to do even significantly more damage than this, and why you shouldn't be so stressed out if you're not doing nearly as much damage as this on this boss fight. So with that being said, let's dive right into it. So the first thing I want to mention is that this is one of the biggest things is, is world buffs. And world buffs are massive, massive, massive for killing any of the bosses, but really for going for parses. If you have full world buffs, you're usually going to do the most DPS. You have a huge advantage over everyone else because you literally are so much stronger. Now, I went into this raid with zero Nax gear, and we are three or four resets in, and I have zero Nax gear, so getting this parse was nice, but I also did have world buffs, and we will break that down in a second. But as of today, even, Warcraft Logs released an announcement or a poll asking, should we be reacquiring or should reacquiring world buffs be bannable or disqualify you from getting a parse on particular fights? And... I don't know which way I really see this. I think probably, but some guilds can't clear the raid in one night so far, so they come back with world buffs and fight the boss. But other guilds can just clear straight through and they'll have world buffs all the way through. It's kind of a touchy subject and you can let me know in the comments what you guys think. I did have world buffs. The number two Horde Rogue does have Darkman Fair as well, so he has 10% damage increase over me with probably similar gear because I was not able to actually get any gear in the raid like I mentioned and if you had Darkman Fair it was probably at least last week or the week before. My DPS here on this fight was 1374 and it could have been slightly higher. The number one in the world actually has like 18k damage just on Blade Flurry and your Blade Flurry can count against both like your MC'd friends, and that actually goes towards the log, which is interesting. And also the Blade Flurry can count from things like the adds that spawn in the last phase of Kel'Thuzad, which I actually did get two hits off of them. And I'll show that in there. It can be a little sketchy using Blade Flurry a second time, specifically for the reasoning that you usually want to watch out for cleaving out a MC'd target or cleaving your friend that's MC'd or pretty much breaking any of the CC. So a really, really good strategy for Kel'Thuzad is to use Blade Flurry and your trinket if you're using an on-use trinket. So any of your two-minute CDs, use it right away because most of these fights, if not every single fight so far, has lasted about two minutes and 30 seconds, which is perfect for using two Blade Flurries and two trinkets. So with that being said, you're very early going to use Blade Flurry and you're very early going to use your on-use trinket if you are using them, which will be my Jom Gabar, which I'm using obviously together with Blade Flurry. I did use Adrenaline Rush in that earlier stage just for safety, although you might want to use it later. Um, it doesn't really change too much where you use the Adrenaline Rush, if it's with the Blade Flurry early or with the Blade Flurry late. It really shouldn't change much about your fight. And the last thing I want to notice in the logs here is there is a massive downtime in my damage here in the middle. I even messed up on this fight quite a bit. I was not sure that my mouse over macro was going to work because it's been bugging in retail so i've been playing too much retail to really trust all of my normal macros so look how much range of me dpsing here this is a huge dps loss so i'm probably losing like a hundred damage or 100 plus dps on this fight where there's almost over 10 seconds of me not even really hitting the boss so this is all of my casts, right? There's nothing really going on in here. And this is where I did blind, like I mentioned. So I actually waited and then blinded to make sure I blinded a, a target that wasn't getting CC'd already. So this was a huge little break in DPS here, guys. And this would 
or did already cost me a couple hundred DPS or over a hundred DPS, which is something that like we can break down. But now let's dive into the video. Okay, so this is downloaded from stream where when you download it loses some quality sometimes. So that's a little bit annoying, but it's not really an issue. I got a pre slice and dice up on that ad or uh, the last abomination. So pretty much everyone wants to do that. And then I'm using Jom Gbar in accordance with my adrenaline rush and blade flurry. A huge thing that's very important here is that I'm using all of my CDs early again, like I mentioned, so that you can use them again later. We do have improved exposed armor, which every guild is going to be wanting to run improved exposed armor. If you don't, that's an issue. We do lose um, fairy fire. I'm pretty sure quite quite close to the end because the our druid goes oom um, and things actually get a bit hectic. So we're going to watch. And so here is where I use evasion. I step away from the boss and one of the targets isn't actually getting CC'd. I go for the blind. There is a mistake from me moving over closer to this side. What if they got frozen and the frost blast hasn't gone out yet, but what if somebody got frozen and I just like screwed them all over and froze them as well as all of my friends. And here you can see, oh, what gets frozen because you want to be at max melee range. So you need to be at max melee range. My threat was kind of scaring me for a second, so I decided to vanish. That was purely for threat. And then we're gonna end up seeing one of the funniest things that can happen in one of these fights. Um, and it's actually gonna be over here. If anyone dies to Shadow Fisher on this fight, it is such a huge mistake. And here, it's being called out in Discord quite a bit. And two melee died to Shadow Fisher. Unfortunately, we were running with 39 people and my guild does have a tendency to allow melee to die to shadow fisher or not allow but melee do have a tendency <laughs> to die to shadow fisher which is unfortunate um but that can just pretty much happen the other things to worry about like this is a very short fight the only other things to really worry about is knocking out any ads from their cc like i mentioned earlier so i'm using jom gabar again with blade flurry you can see these ads are running by us or my main tank peels off to pick them up because they're not being cc'd and a lot of people are dying right there a blade flurry does hit that one ad as it's running through me that is the only ad that gets hit by my blade flurry and that is the only reason why any of the cc is the way that it is and we get a fatty hungering cold from that drop. One last thing I want you guys to take away as I scroll back to this screen where people are dying to the shadow fisher is that none of the damage to any of the ads in the first phase are going towards your parse whatsoever. So in the actual first phase as a rogue, you really want to just be like stunning the abominations as they get in. So even me as a dagger rogue, I was going swords for this. And what I was doing was just doing a sinister strike into a kidney shot. We had five rogues in there. So you can rotate double kidney shots on every one of these ads and they should all be dead before they can even hit anyone. Um, so I was doing either the first or the second, which is just a single tar or a single sinister strike into a kidney shot. Or if you are doing the second one, then you can build more combo points, two or three combo points into a second kidney shot. The ad should absolutely die before it gets unstunned. And that should pretty much happen even without world buffs. This boss is very fast, very easy to kill if you guys dodge the Shadow Fishers and everyone does their CC properly. I would absolutely suggest using a mouse over macro for your blind so you don't have to detarget and run away like I did and wasted all of that time DPSing. My guild, personally, we have some issues with execution so i planned on basically moving away when the mc went out you can see that i used evasion there also i moved away to make sure that i got a target that wasn't getting cc'd ideally for rogue you are instantly blinding because then it gives your mages time to get sheeps off but for us it can be a little bit more hectic so i decided to wait a, a little bit there and there you have it, guys. That is the world's number one parse for Kel'Thuzad on a rogue horde side. There are three 
alliance rogues that are doing better than that even one in progress that has no world buffs that has done more damage and i obviously could have done at least 100 more damage which would have put me as the world number two behind the number one which had a bunch of cleave damage which is kind of cheesy so if you want to cheese this parse which we'll see definitely from some guilds they're going to bring the ads in and they're going to cleave those down that's just cheesy and it's just uh i don't know why it really goes towards the log but it does Anyways, guys, good luck out there killing this boss. Basically, if you have world buffs, you're going to be at a huge advantage. If you don't have world buffs, you're going to be at a disadvantage, but you still can put up a lot, a lot of damage. And if you're not in one of these speedrun guilds where you're clearing the raid in basically right over an hour, noobs is at an hour and seven minutes now, you're pretty much going to lose most of your world buffs no matter what. So you're just going to have your one hour buffs. And again, like I mentioned, a lot of this fight, we didn't have fairy fire. Thank you guys for watching. As usual, my name is Sarth. Much love to all of you guys, and have a good one. Happy holidays.